Can you all hear me? Yes. Right. Can you all hear me? No, that's better. It's so turned on. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I wasn't planning to tell a story, but I realised I actually have one tonight that is suitable for pre-watershed. So, why the f*** not? Um, uh, this story is, it was originally a short story read by a writer called Neil Gaiman. A big cheer, anyone? Big cheer, anyone aside from Emily and myself who's read Neil Gaiman? He's very good. Um, but uh, if you haven't, do look him up. This short story is called Chivalry. <laughs> it was a Wednesday morning, and with, uh, Mabel Wilson was doing her usual Wednesday morning thing of dropping down to the Oxfam shop on the high street and having a little bit of a look around. Now, it was Wednesday was the day they brought in some ran the random new things were brought in, and it was on that morning that behind a stuffed owl and a couple of Mills and Boone books, she found the Holy Grail. <laughs> She had a look at it, there wasn't a price tag attached. And uh, she picked it up and she had a, you know, kind of a look. It looked you know, in fairly good condition. And she went up to the girl behind the counter, Sarah, who was doing one of those uh, Cosmo, you know, how do you recognise your knight in shining armour kind of quizzes. And she was like, Sarah, um, how, much, how much is this? What table did you find it on? That, that table over there. It's a fiver. Okay. So she put five pounds on the table and she brought it home. And so she spent the rest of that day, she'd read somewhere that to, uh, to bring up a bit of a shine on silver, you wash in vinegar and hot water and all this, and she'd done the whole thing. And there's a bit of, little bit of red stuff at the bottom, but she wiped that out, that was fine. <laughs> and um, she put it up on the mantelpiece, and it looked really nice. She, her Hubert, God bless his soul, would have loved it. Now the next day, she went down and she played bingo as she normally did on a Thursday, but it was the Friday that something unexpected happened. She got a knock at the door. And she went over and she opened the door and there was this man standing there, this man in, in, in silver armour with like a white surcoat, long blonde hair, piercing blue eyes, lantern jaw, class act all the way. And on seeing her, he fell to one knee. <laughs> My lady, I am Sir Galahad of the Round Table and for many years I have been on a quest to find the Sangriel, the Holy Grail which once held the wine and blood of Christ our Lord. And Abel went, okay. <laughs> Do you have any identification? <laughs> because she had been told before, if a man shows up at your door, you ask to see some kind of ID. And he was like, hold on. I went back to the saddlebags of a very impressive white horse that was standing out in the green. <laughs> When he returned, he had a long vellum scroll and there was quite a good artist's illustration of him and the words, I, Arthur, King of Britannia and the surrounding isles, do repeat this quest upon this gentleman, and so on. She was like, okay. He says, my lady, do you have the grail? She goes, yes. And he goes, and, and tears were running down his cheeks. This was the, the summation of a long, long kind of quest. And he's like, and may I bring it back with me to Camelot? And she said, no. <laughs> um, well, see, I, 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 don't, I don't have the identification, but I did buy it. And, you know, I have the receipt, and also I might actually, it kind of looks nice in the mouth, I might actually just hang on to it. <laughs> and Galahad went, okay. <laughs> I'll just, and she said, you should probably, I think someone's trying to clamp your horse. <laughs> and Galahad left. Now, the next Wednesday, uh, Mabel went down to the Oxfam shop again and she was pottering around and having a look at different things. And when she went up, she brought like a, I don't know, a candlestick or something. I hadn't thought this far ahead. And she brought the candlestick up to Sarah and she's like, Sarah, did a man drop by last week? And, the, and uh, Sarah was, yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's very nice. And I was like, did you tell him where I lived? And he was like, oh yeah, but he seemed so lovely and he had identification. And, <laughs> Um, I didn't think it would do any harm, and they went, oh, that's okay. Sarah, are you wearing lipstick? And she was like, maybe. And I was like, and then a few, day <laughs> a few days later, there's another knock on the door, and she, uh, she answers it, and Galahad is standing there again. He's like, my lady, do you still possess the grail? And she goes, 
from the, from the man's face there. And she's like, I'm not, I just, I, I, I paid for it. And, I, and, and she goes, maybe you better come in. And she came in, he sat down at the table, kind of awkward, it's kind of hard to sit down in armour. And uh, <laughs> she made him a cup of tea and she told him about her Hubert, God rest his soul, and, and what she did over day and how she had a son. She didn't really talk to him that much anymore and she kind of missed him. And then he talked about his father, the mad beggar who became then a knight, and uh, how his mother Morgana Le Fay was a witch and so on. So on. They, had a, they had a bit of a chat. And eventually he said, look, this is important. I can't do the accent for very long, right? So, but, uh, and he brought back a bag. He says, I brought some things to trade. And he opens the bag and he takes out this apple. Now this apple, if there was a god of apples, this would be the god of apples. It was ripe and it was and the barest pressure of his fingers made juice run down. And he goes, this is one of the apples of the Hesperides. One bite of this will take you back 30 years. Another bite, you will be a young woman. Again, to so watch it. And he's like, you will be a young woman. And, and you, um, if you eat the whole apple, you will live forever. And he put it down on the table. And he goes, and this, shh, is a sword flambeard, blessed by the gods of war. Any man who holds this will never be defeated in battle. It could split a very ray of sunlight upon its edge. And she said, well, could you put that down, please? <laughs> I, 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 you're, you're waving it around. And, and he put it down on the table. And, and the final thing he took out was a small stone. He goes, this is the philosopher's stone. This stone will turn lead into gold. You put this stone in a glass of water, you drink this water, you will live forever. These are the things that I have gone to many a dark place to bring these things back for you. And Mabel Wilson looked at them. And she picked up the apple and she smelt it. And in that smell, was memory, the memory of her as a young woman, a woman who turned boys' heads. And she knew that were she to bite it, she could be that woman again. And she looked at Galan for a moment, she knew how handsome he was. She put the apple down. And then she picked up the sword. And with that sword, she could hear the break of shields and the death of men and glory and terror and heartbreak. And she put the sword down. <laughs> and she looked at the stone and she picked it up and she, she felt, you know, the, 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 the draw of wealth, and she could hear in the distance the flap of dragon's wings. And she said, okay, look, Hubert would have liked the sword, but I don't really have much of a need for it. Um, the, it's not polite, it's not appropriate to offer things like that apple to a woman. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, I'll take the stone. It looks, it'll look good on the mantelpiece, and one for one is a fair trade if I ever heard it. And he went, thank you very much. And he picked up the grail again, he started to weep, he was a knight, he did a bit of curl. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. And, uh, and he went to walk out, and she goes, oh, hold on, hold on a second, you've a long way to go, I'll make you some sandwiches. And she made him, like, and I put like an apple in it, one of those, and he rode off. Now next Wednesday, Mabel Wilson came back down to the, to the Oxfam shop. And there was a new girl behind the counter. And they was like, oh, what happened to Sarah? Oh, well, it was really strange, actually. This gentleman came by in a horse and just took her away. And was like, oh, right, that's, that's good. And, uh, <laughs> and she went down, she was having her rummage, and then she was looking at all these different mills and moons and all this, all that kind of jazz. I don't really know what's in Oxfam shops. And, uh, <laughs> it's a discount. And, uh, <laughs> And that's when she saw, sitting on a pile of um, old novels, a lamp. And she, she picked it up and she had a bit of a look and it said, do not rub on the side. <laughs> and she thought very carefully and then she said, nah, I'd know where to put it. 